Welcome back to my Pokemon Platinum Hardcore Nuzlocke walkthrough. In the last episode, we used our newly obtained HM for Rock Climb to pick up some extra items, wiped out Team Galactic's HQ building in Veilstone, and faced Cyrus for the second time. A few close calls for sure, but luckily nobody was lost. After tearing Saturn to pieces, it was time to begin the arduous trek through Mount Coronet's largest sections. And upon reaching Spear Pillar at the top, we faced off against Team Galactic's Mars and Jupiter. The Distortion World is up next, along with one of the toughest fights in the game. The road from Gen 4 Casual to Platinum Master continues. Let's do this. As you can see, despite ending the last episode atop Spear Pillar, getting ready to plunge into the bizarre location that is the Distortion World, we are actually back in a Pokemon Center at the moment. In my preparation for Cyrus, I realized that we didn't exactly have an optimal team to deal with a few of his threats, particularly that Gyarados. So I'm boxing Gallade for now in favor of Rotom. Gallade doesn't stack up super well against the majority of Cyrus's new team, and we could really use an electric type, especially one that is immune to Earthquake. After catching Rotom, up to speed, we find ourselves back at the top of Spear Pillar. Thanks for waiting everyone, I uh, really appreciate that. And it's time to jump into the Distortion World. I'm not going to go over how to get through this place, as there are better videos out there for that, and even I still get lost in here, so it would probably be best that I don't confuse anybody. This place is pretty interesting your first time around. The different character perspectives and unique mechanics for the area are pretty entertaining. Once you go through it once though, it does get a bit old. You kind of just want to get through it as quickly as possible and face off against Cyrus. Hopefully after a few more runs, I'll have the route down to a science. The puzzle isn't too bad overall, and I do like how they incorporated the Lake Trio to assist. It's worth noting that you can push all three boulders down to the next level before you actually go down there to push them into their appropriate containers. Just a quick tip to save you some time here. After navigating through the rest of the world, we have finally reached our battle with Cyrus. Be sure to heal up and do your planning before you actually get to this point. There's no team review for this one, but the assignments should be fairly obvious just by looking at our current setup. Final battle against Cyrus is upon us. Let's do this. We lead with Pelipper, which in hindsight, it would have probably been better if we used Infernape instead here. Despite our great physical bulk, Thunderfang would have taken us out with a crit there very easily. Infernape just would have been safer and faster and more powerful, etc. Nonetheless, the Surf is able to bring Houndoom down. Moving on to Honchkrow now, there are several moves that could come out here as everything other than Heat Wave is neutral. So I decided to bank on Psychic as it seems to be the move that will most likely kill Pelipper here out of the three options, and I send in Weavile to take the incoming hit. Luckily for us, it was indeed Psychic and we get the free switch. Honchkrow may be fairly bulky himself, but I have a feeling this Ice Punch is gonna hurt. A lot. <laughs> The big boss Pokemon falls, and Cyrus responds with his own Weavile, the scariest of the bunch. Normally, his ace requires a bit of strategy to ensure that you make it out without multiple deaths, or worse, losing the entire run. For us though, we've got the best counter to Weavile in the whole game. Infernape can take any single one of Weavile's attacks, and with a fist plate boosted, four times effective priority Mach Punch, this Weavile does not stand a chance. With the worst of this fight now out of the way, Gyarados comes out as expected. This Gyarados was really the biggest reason why we went back for an electric type, as we did not have an easy way to deal with him without one. I cleanly switch into Rotom on the Earthquake, and then I go for the Thunderbolt. I made sure to train up Rotom's speed before this, just to ensure that we were going to be faster no matter what nature this Gyarados had. With Crobat as Cyrus's final Pokemon, I decided to keep Rotom in to finish the job. After a pathetically missed Toxic, the incoming Thunderbolt connects, and Cyrus is finished. That would have been the cleanest Cyrus fight I have ever experienced had I just led with Infernape instead of Bellabird. But hey, I'll take it.
After speaking with Cyrus and Cynthia for a bit, Jesus, this dude is seriously out of his frickin' mind, we approach Giratina. Now normally, I would advocate for just using your Master Ball here, and calling your trip to the Distortion World a well-deserved success. But I'm feeling a bit ambitious today, so I decided to take Giratina down myself. This would involve basically every single member of our party, and there was a lot of switching and pivoting involved to get around the various threats imposed on us by the Shadow Pokemon. Pelipper took out a decent chunk with Ice Beam, and then I eventually land on Bronzong to throw up a Reflect. Thank god none of these incoming ominous winds procced an Omni Boost, and none of them crit either. Once the Reflect was up, I sent in Infernape to go for Shadow Claws, which now that I think about it, might be the only time I've actually used this move in this playthrough. <laughs> Nothing that Giratina had was enough to take us down, and Infernape's second Shadow Claw removes the Shadow Pokémon from existence. After the battle, we end up in Send Off Spring, where you can potentially pick up another encounter here if you don't have anything on this list. From here, the Lake Trio is now accessible and the water returns to Lake Valor as well. Worth noting that you can backtrack through Mount Coronet again and return to the cave where the Galactic Grunt was previously standing. This will give you access to a hidden nugget and the TM for Dragon Claw. I will not be going back for it in this playthrough unless I feel I need it to get through the league. We'll see how the final team shapes up. With the primary story sequences out of the way, we return to Sanjay town to heal up and regale our triumphs with Professor Rowan and Dawn back at the lab. And Jesus, could you guys take a couple steps back or something? It's time to continue our quest by moving towards Sunny Shore City, so let's talk about Route 222. This route is decently sized, although I wouldn't say there's much to do here apart from grabbing our next encounter. The first trainer upon entering the route will have a Luxray, so be sure to handle that correctly. And a little ways down the road, this trainer here will have a lot bunny that really packs a punch as well. Rhydon had no issues dealing with either one. For our encounter, we've got Electabuzz. Even though we aren't playing with trade evolutions in this run, Electabuzz is definitely more than capable of holding its own for the remainder of the game. It gets Light Screen and Thunderbolt via level up, and it has a sufficient enough physical attack stat to where it could utilize a move like Brick Break as well. Pretty solid overall. And Electivire is obviously just a better Electabuzz. So definitely play with that if you are playing with trade evolutions. There are no items really to discuss as everything on this route is very optional. There are a few hidden heart scales if you do want those and you can pick up a couple of PP ups as well. And that's it. It's time to move on to Sunny Shore City. We are quickly interrupted by Flint, of course, who lets us know that Volkner is sulking over being too good for everyone else. Volkner is a pretty cool gym leader in concept, and I do really like his team. But talking to him in the lighthouse gives me Wallace-like vibes from Pokemon Emerald. Like, could you imagine if in Platinum they made Volkner the champion and Cynthia the red-style fight at the post-game? Everyone would freak out. It's bad enough that Steven got replaced in Emerald, but replacing Cynthia could have very well ruined the entire game for a lot of people, I'm sure. Sunny Shore City is a pretty neat area with a nice technological theming. Compared to the other cities and towns in the game, content outside of the 8th gym is very optional though. You can grab a Thunderstone if that's something you need, and the Zap Plate to increase electric damage. But outside of that, you're usually blasting through this place in what feels like a couple of minutes. And just like that, we are moving on to Volkner to obtain our final badge before the Pokemon League. I spent some time training up the squad offline, so let's get into another team review. Rhydon will be leading the way and will become the primary focus for this fight. Not only is a ground type great to have here for obvious reasons, but Volkner also leans more towards the physical side, which will work nicely with Rhydon's physical bulk. Our rock buddy here is holding a Choppleberry to cut the damage of an incoming fighting move in half, as Raichu's Focus Blast is really the only thing that can deal some serious damage. I will be going for the Earthquake Sweep as my primary strategy. Everyone else on the team is essentially a backup, although Gallade will be the first up to the plate if Rhydon can't get the job done, as he is sporting an Earthquake slot of his own. Our final badge of the walkthrough is in our grasp, and I can think of no better way to lift Faulkner's spirit than to beat him down.
Leading with our Rhydon, we go for the first Earthquake on Jolteon. The Iron Tail does connect through that 75% accuracy and deals a bit more than I would have expected considering Jolteon is far more renowned as a special attacker. Raichu comes in now, and I'm fully expecting the Focus Blast here. Raichu's attack doesn't miss, and deals a huge amount of damage despite our Choppleberry. I'm starting to think I didn't prepare for this as well as I could have. I think I can take on Luxray at least, but I don't think Rhydon's going to be ready for Electivire. I probably should have used Gallade against Raichu instead, as the incoming Focus Blast would have gone against Gallade's much higher special defense, and it would have of course been resisted as well due to our Psychic typing. Volkner's Luxray does not kill us with Ice Fang, and the Earthquake in response is able to take it out. But now, we're on Volkner's final Pokemon, his Ace Electivire. Well, the new plan is going to involve risking crits and hopping around between team members to ultimately get out of this without any deaths. So, I switch into Pelipper first as the only other team member I have that can take physical damage, and since Rhydon is so low on health, anything could come out here. Luckily, it was just a Fire Punch, which was the best case scenario. Now, I'm fully expecting the Thunder Punch, so I switch into our Roserade, because I know that we are faster and a single fire punch will not take us out unless it crits. Our Giga Drain brings us back up to full. Please, RNGesus, please do not punish us today. Thankfully, the attack doesn't result in Roserade's demise, but the Citrus Berry is popped and Electivire is back up to about 75%. Banking on the next incoming attack being Fire Punch, I switch into our own ace to try to bring this one home. This was risky, as Giga Impact could have definitely come out instead here, I feel like but I thought it was necessary to take this risk. The Fire Punch does come out again, and we suffer minimal damage. Will a Fist Play boosted close combat be enough here? Don't let me down, buddy. And Faulkner goes down. Thank God we didn't lose anyone there. And despite my blood pressure rising a little bit, at least the fight made for a good story. With our 8th badge in hand, we look to the Pokemon League to finish this walkthrough off, once and for all. Let's wrap up with Route 223 before we discuss the challenges that lie within Victory Road. Heading north, we run into Barry and Jasmine for a bit of dialogue that results in the acquisition of Waterfall, so we can move into Victory Road as we approach the northern end of this route. Couple of things to note about this route right off the bat, there are a lot of water types. I know, shocker. So bring an electric slash grass type or two before moving forward although the trainers on this route don't pose too much of a threat, at least. What does pose somewhat of a threat, though, are these wild tentacruel that you'll encounter often if you choose not to use repels on this route. These tentacruel can range anywhere from level 30 to 50, and if you encounter one that's closer to the top end of that spectrum, it will know Hydro Pump, so be aware of that. I had a few close calls with that in my previous run of Platinum. But speaking of wild Pokemon, despite there being so few to run into on this route, we actually get another encounter here in Mantis. I've never been a big fan of baby Pokemon, but this thing can stay. It's adorable. Mantine is a very interesting Pokemon with some very unique options. The water flying combo is a great pick, as we've already witnessed with our Pelipper. But unlike the physical bulkiness that our Pelican friend is working with, Mantine has one of the highest special defense stats in the entire game. Side note here, Tentacruel also has a great special defense stat, and both Pokemon offer special defense EVs when killed, making Route 223 the premier training area for special defense if you're looking for that. Mantine also comes with a variety of interesting move pool options 
options outside of your typical surf slash ice beam combo. You can pick up Psy Beam, Signal Beam, Air Cutter, and even Earthquake if you wanted to use that on your Mantine for some insane reason. But hey, it's there. After catching our new friend, we can pick up the TM for Rain Dance, a few hidden hard scales if needed, and a rare candy towards the northeastern end of the route. And with that, this route and episode are now over. In the next one, we make our preparations for the long and arduous journey through Pokemon Platinum's Victory Road. And once we're through, we'll go over the final team and go through one last review covering Sinnoh's Pokemon League. In the meantime, as usual, please like the video if you liked it, and subscribe for more content like this. That's it from me, I'll see you next time.